Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we will go ahead to understand how the page routing system works in next years. And the routing convention is quite simple and straightforward. So, when a folder is added into the app directory, that folder automatically becomes a route when a page is created within. Yeah, so the first case that we are going to look at is when a user visits our website. Okay, by default, we should be able to route the user to the home page. So when the user navigates to localhost port 3000, we want to show the home page. And that is quite simple to establish. Open up the SRC. And by the way, if you do not know how to create a Next.js application, you can watch my previous lecture to do that. The link is right in the description below. Alright, so any page that is created within the app directory will map to the root of your domain. So by default, this page over here becomes your home page. Everything you see over here is what describes the landing page that you see. Let's clean it up quickly. Scroll up, starting from lines 6, let's highlight, to lines 110. Wipe it off, save, on the browser. All right, let's modify the global CSS. And I want to get rid of everything starting from lines 5 as well. Okay, highlight and then wipe it off. Save, on the browser, you have a blank page now. Beautiful. So for case one, the key point to take note of is that when a page is created within the app directory, automatically that page will map to the root of your domain. And by default, it becomes your home page. That exactly is what we see over here. Okay, so I'm going to do h1 tag, home page, save on the browser. Here is it. Home page. Beautiful. Now let's look at case two. When building a reward application, chances are you will navigate from one page to the other. So in this example, we want to navigate from one user to the other. Go back to the VS Code. Right within the app directory, we are going to create a new folder called users. Right within the users directory, we are going to create another directory called James. Again, right within the users, let's create another directory called John. And now the question is, how do we route between these pages? Okay, it's quite simple to do that. Right within the James directory, right click, new file. And then we're going to call it page.tss. From the beginning, I told you that when a folder is added into the app directory, that folder automatically becomes a route when a page is created within. So now we can say that the directory James is now a route, simply because a page is created within. So right within the page, we are going to do RFC to generate React functional component. And boom. Simple and straightforward. So what I'm going to do here, uh, we are going to have a h2 tag. So I'm going to do h2, within the h2, I'm going to do James page. Okay, let's give it a class name. Let's stylize it with the tailwind CSS. I'm going to do text dash 9xl. Save and check it out. So right within the URL, I'm going to do localhost port 3000 slash users slash James. Click the enter key and here is the James page. Beautiful. So what if we do slash users slash John? Let's see what happens. It says this page could not be found. You know why? It is simply because we created the directory John, but we did not create a page within. So for this directory to become a route, we have to create a page within. Now right click, new file, page.tsx, RFC to generate the functional component. 
So we have to go back to this page. I want to copy this H2 tag. Come here. Paste. Done. I'm going to do John's page. Okay. When you save on the browser, can you see? Slash users slash John. And now we have the John's page. Honestly, this is stress-free. Unlike React.js where you have to install React Router DOM and after installation, you have to configure the router and you begin to add code to your application. But this is code-free and as well, it is stress-free. When you're building a reward application, chances are you want James and John to assume the same layout. For example, you want James and John to assume a green layout background. So what I'm going to do, right when the users right click, we are going to create a new file called layout.tsx. So all we have to do here is to generate the layout. And now we want James and John to assume this layout background. What I'm going to do here is to implement the class name and then I'm going to do bg-green-500. Okay, so for every children that is passed in here, they will uh, inherit this layout background. It's as simple as that. So when we save the application, now John's page has got a green background. So let's do James and see what we have. Take a look. James has got a green background as well. Now, the question is, what if we want to create another page and we do not want that page to assume the green background? For example, let's create Angela over here. Angela. And then right within Angela, let's create a new file called page.tsx RFC to generate the functional component. And for sure, we have to copy some of these stuff so that um, we can go smoothly. Okay, let's do Angela's page. Just like this. Save on the browser slash users slash Angela. Can you see? So we do not want Angela's page to assume the same layout background. How in actual sense can we do that? All right, so here exactly is where the route group comes in. Let me teach you how to do that quickly with the route group. So if we do not want Angela's page to assume the same background with James and John, what we have to do is write within the users. Let's create a new folder called names. We are going to wrap up this folder in the parentheses. So write within the parentheses, I'm going to do names can you see so the next line is to move james and john right into the directory name like this you have to yes okay fine having done that we also have to move the layout.tss into the names directory beautiful so this exactly is how to do that. Okay, so now let's see if Angela will assume the same background again. So when you check it out on the browser, and boom, can you see? So now we have succeeded in excluding Angela from the layout. All right, so let me go over it again so that everyone understands it well enough. So let me zoom up the code editor. Now, within the users directory, we have another directory called names. But now this names is being wrapped up in parentheses. This parentheses is more like to abstract the folder away from the URL. So these folder names cannot be injected into the URL. Let me show you. So if you do here slash users slash names slash James, take a look. It says this page could not be found. It is simply because we cannot read the names over here within the URL. You know why? It is wrapped up in a parenthesis. Mm -hmm. That is just the convention. Within these names, we have James and John. Now, for you to route between James and John, you just have to target 
users slash James or users slash John. It's as simple as that. Now, if you observe carefully, you will realize that layout.tss is at the same folder level with James and John. And that exactly is the reason James and John can go into the layout.tss. If you observe again, you will realize that Angela is outside this domain. Okay? When you close down the name, you see Angela. So Angela is on the same level with the directory names. And the directory name cannot be read. Do you understand? So this exactly is how to exclude a page, not to assume the same layout with some pages. James and John assume this same layout simply because they are all in the same level. And Angela cannot go into this layout simply because Angela is outside the domain. I think that is quite simple and straightforward to understand. If you do not understand this explanation for the very first time, I advise you play the video over and over again to get it stick to your memory. Alright, so this is all for the page routing system. In the next lecture, we will learn about the dynamic routing. This is all for now. Make sure to smash the like button. Do well to subscribe and see you in the next lecture.